Hello, this is Jem from ElevateCode.com, and in this tutorial we'll be picking up from our last tutorial on printing. It would be helpful to watch that video first. We will primarily be focusing on getting our words to stay within the margins. We'll be using Visual Basic 2010 Express, and I'm assuming you know the basics of VB.NET. It is also extremely helpful if you are familiar with working with the graphics in VB.NET, as printing is very similar. As we go along, I encourage you to pause the video and type the code with me, and just play with the code so that you fully understand it. So let's begin. In order to get things to print correctly, we will have to break things into separate lines. We'll go into the print doc begin print sub and dim font text as a font that is equal to the font inside of the text box on our form. Then we'll dim text width, which will be the width of the area that we want our text to fit into. We can get this by subtracting the margins from the entire paper size width. Dim string size as a new size f. A size f is an ordered pair of floating point numbers, typically the width and height of a rectangle. Dim g and set it equal to me.createGraphics. This will help make things a little shorter to type. We'll dim list lines to print as a new list of strings at form level because we will be accessing this during different subs, first creating the list and actually printing it. Now we'll go back to the begin print sub. We'll make sure that the list is cleared. Now we will use a for next loop to go through all of the lines in the text box. We're going to measure all of these lines using g.measureString. This measurement will become string size. If this measurement is less than the width of the area we want to print to, we'll just go ahead and print it that way since it won't go over the margins. To do this, we'll add it to the list lines to print list. Otherwise, we're going to have to break up the string. This part is a little more complicated, so I'm going to show you code that will help you first understand the concept, and then we're going to go back and redo the code that is more complicated. We'll dim string words as an array equal to all of the words in the current line. You can do this with the split function, telling it to split the string every time there is a space, which would be between each word. Dim string measure and set it equal to a blank string. Dim int max words as an integer and set it to zero. Dim int start point as an integer and set it equal to zero. Dim sf buffer as a size f and set it equal to the measurement of five m's in the current font. We use m because m, w, and the percent sign tend to be some of the largest letters in any font, and most words are about five letters long. Use a for loop to go through all of the words in the string words array. Now we're going to keep adding words to string measure from string words until it measures as longer than the text width minus sf buffer, which is basically until it would end up running past the margins with the buffer kept in mind. Once that happens, we know our max number of words for that line is going to be one less than the ones currently being counted. We'll reset string measure to nothing. Now we're going to rebuild the string up to the max number of words. Use a for loop for int start point to the max number of words we can have on this line. We'll set string measure plus equal to string words i plus space. What this does is it will rip the words out of the string words array up to the max number of words that you can have on that line, and it will add spaces in between them, which works because that's how we initially split it up earlier with the spaces. Now we will add this rebuilt string to our list of lines to print. We'll reset string measure to nothing for the next loop through. Then set in start point plus equal to max words plus one. This ensures that the starting point is the word after the max words, so that next time it goes through the loop, it will continue to print starting from the word that was cut off. So now the next bit of code is to do just that. We'll add the remaining part of the string. Once the count is equal to the length of the words, then we'll reset string measure to nothing. Then we'll use a for next loop. We'll go from the max words plus one through all of the words in the string words array, and for each of these words, we will again be rebuilding the string into string measure. We'll add this rebuilt string to the list of lines to print, and then reset the string measure to nothing. Go to the print page sub and change it to loop through the list lines to print array instead of the number of lines on the page. And of course, it's also going to be drawing the strings from the list lines to print array as well. When we run the program, if we try to print the document, you can see that most of our words are now effectively word wrapping, but a few of them are making it past the margins. 
As I said, this code was just to demonstrate the core concept. Now we're going to redo this code using the same concepts, but we're going to add in some more complex code that will help keep the text within the margins. Alright, so the first thing we'll do is go up to the Begin Print sub, and we're going to highlight everything in the Else section and just delete it. Again, just to make things easier to read, we will dim top and left margins as integers and set them equal to their respective margins. Dim SF buffer as size F and set it equal to g.measureStringM in the current font that is inside of the text box, which is font text. We're going to be breaking this up character by character this time, so we only need one M. Dim layout rec as a new rectangle F. The rectangle will start at the top left margin and go to the width of the area that we want our printing to stay within. It will be the size of our current font's height. We'll be using this to find out how much we can fit per line. Now dim string format as a new drawing dot string format. String format has a trimming attribute that we can set to string trimming dot word. This will essentially do what we had done manually before. It will trim the string to the nearest word. Dim characters fitted and set it to zero. Dim lines filled and set that to zero. Now we're going to use a for next loop to go through all of the lines. In these lines, we're going to go through the length of these lines and see how many characters we can fit per line while using the string trimming dot word function to see how many words we can fit per line. Measure the string. Getting the substring of the current fitted character in the current font as it fits into the new size F, which will be the same as the rectangle that we just created earlier. So right here, we're seeing how many characters we can actually fit into that rectangle. We are using the string format dot trimming to word here and referencing the lines that are filled. Now we can add this to the list of lines to print. Now int fitted care can be incremented by fitting character so that the next line will start underneath the previous one. Now if we run the program, you can see that our code fits more neatly and doesn't go past the right margin. If we go back and change the font, it will still work, for the most part. Let's change the font to say 20 and take a look at how it handles that when we run the program. As you can see, our code still works. The only exception here is with 1870, and this is because this number in our string trimming dot word doesn't count these numbers as a word, so it doesn't wrap it to the next line. As long as we add in a little more code to handle this kind of scenario, everything else will work fine. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below the video, and just let us know if you like the tutorial. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. We've got plenty more high-quality, high-level programming videos coming your way.